Hey everybody, happy Monday. It's Joe Reese from Ternary Data with the Monday Morning Data Chat. So unfortunately, Matt Housley, my counterpart that you usually see in these videos, he's not gonna be able to make it today. So you're stuck with me, congratulations. So I um, wanna talk about a question that I get a lot in my inbox and emails, um, random chats. And the question is, from data scientists and analysts who want to know how to get into data engineering. So today we're gonna to talk about that. And I think it really would help to start out with understanding um, like what is a data engineer? So if you do a broad search in Google and we come up with I think it's as many definitions of a data engineer as there are uh, results, in this case, 855 million. Um, so in this case, data engineers build pipelines that prepare and transform data for data scientists, okay? Um, <clears throat> data engineers are the data professionals who prepare the big data infrastructure to be analyzed by data scientists, okay? Uh, data engineers are responsible for finding trends in data sets and developing algorithms to help make raw data more useful to the enterprise. Um, okay, that's, that's a definition. How about this one from Xplenty? Um, Xplenty makes um, awesome data pipelining tools and uh, they say a data engineer sets up and maintains the data infrastructures that support business information systems and applications. So as you can see, quite a few uh, um, varying definitions off the bat here, uh, even if we do a, uh, you know, a specific search in Google, um, we still come up with, what is it, 467,000 results uh, for the exact keyword match, um, you know, for what is data engineer, hex -hex phrase match. So I think needless to say, there is not one definition of a data engineer. I'll give you mine. So <laughs> for whatever it's worth, uh, add it to the, the pile, but I tend to view data engineering as um, the collection and processing of data that makes it useful for analysts and data scientists uh, with the end use cases of doing analytics, reporting, uh, machine learning, and so forth. So really data engineer gathers the raw data ingredients and makes them available to um, the end users who are analysts and data scientists, which in this case, if you're watching this video, this is probably you. And so, but now you're interested in becoming a data engineer. Maybe you've heard it's a really hot job. Um, maybe, you know, you're just looking for a change in your career, or maybe this interests you. I'm not sure what the motivation is, but somehow now you're interested in, um, you know, maybe moving further, uh, um, you know, into the, uh, you know, the engineering side of data. Um, and so as you can see, there's a lot of different definitions out there. Um, I, I think it, it can be very confusing at times. You'll see uh, terms like big data still being thrown around. Uh, my personal take on the phrase big data is it's pretty old school and um, you know, a lot of companies, uh, you know, especially when you're talking about non-FANG um, type companies, uh, you know, there's, I think it's debatable whether or not the, the term big data is, is appropriate to use, um, but it's still a buzzword that's out there. Um, I would just tend to look at things uh, viewed, through the, viewed through the lens of just being data, uh, regardless of size. And so you'll see other terms being thrown around like analytics engineer or ETL engineer. Um, really, these are sort of just rebrandings of uh, um, like BI engineers and uh, actually ETL engineers been around for a while. but. Um, my opinion is these are subsets of data engineering. And so, you know, the point is, as a data scientist or an analyst, you may find a particular piece of um, uh, what a data engineer does. And um, I think that would be worth you uh, considering learning more about that specific thing, whether that's data warehousing or data pipelines uh, or so forth, right? So the things that I think you should um, learn about or definitely learn uh, proper software engineering techniques. You're gonna be writing a lot more um, production grade code. 
uh, as a data scientist, you might be writing code, but it's typically going to be in a notebook. Um, the code you're going to write in, in a production system will tend to be um, very modularized, uh, not scripts, right? So you're going to have to learn how to write uh, good code, probably in a language like Python, maybe Java, Scala, I'm starting to see Rust and Go out there as well, but I would just stick with Python. Um, you know, maybe a JVM based language like um, Java or Scala if you need to. Um, you know, and then, you know, apply that to a particular use case, right? Um, maybe at your employer. I, I think given the uh, shortage of data engineers out there, um, you know, I, I would say an employer might be pretty happy to have somebody, you know, step in, you know, uh, who understands the data aspect of things uh, and wants to help out more on the engineering side of things. Um, understand the paradigms, right? So there's, a, there's this concept called the data life cycle. It's basically the um, process of ingesting data, storing it, um, processing it, and then making it useful for something. Uh, that something is actually the type of work that you're doing as a data analyst or data scientist right now. That's, um, uh, you know, doing exploratory data analysis, making machine learning models, uh, maybe modeling the data so it's useful in BI reports and any number of other things that data scientists and analysts do with data these days. So learn about other concepts too, right? So um, you'll, you'll see terms like ELT and ETL thrown around. You probably want to know what both of those acronyms are and where they're applicable. Um, you know, why is it that ELT is now in fashion? Um, you should read and find out. Uh, batch versus real time. These are paradigms you need to think of. Um, when is one paradigm more appropriate than the other? Um, do you want to use streaming for everything? If so, what are the uh, trade-offs? Um, you know, data lakes, cloud data warehouses, um, these are paradigms, right? And different uh, approaches to storing data and making it useful for downstream analytics and models. Um, when would you want to use a data lake? When would you want to use a data warehouse? When would you want to use a lake house <laughs> or a data mesh? or any of these other things, right? And so um, let me just share with you real quick, actually, uh, you know, kind of a misnomer I, I sometimes see, um, which is, uh, you know, a question I got the other day was, um, how do I learn Spark to become a data engineer? And I thought about that for a bit and I, I thought, well, okay, so I think it's the wrong question to ask. I think you're conflating a technology with a discipline and they're not the same thing. So Spark is not data engineering. Um, and as you can see, it's got, you know, a few replies and interest. Um, but the point stands, you know, don't focus on a specific technology. Technologies come and go. Spark was, I think, it was a response to MapReduce, which, you know, uh, was kind of what you did uh, when, if you've heard of Hadoop, uh, that's typically how you would um, process data in Hadoop, transform data using MapReduce. Um, Spark came along, made that more efficient with a memory model. And, um, you know, it, it, I got into Spark in 2014. Um, I don't really see as much value in using Spark as I did back then, namely because you, you have a lot of awesome cloud data warehouses that have popped up that effectively do a lot of what you would have been doing in Spark. Um, uh, so, and these data warehouses are like Snowflake, um, you know, Redshift, Synapse, um, BigQuery, right? So all these, I think, offer a lot of the same functionalities, being able to query a data frame, aka a table, um, but in a much, um, you know, less complicated fashion. So, you know, what are some other paradigms you need to learn about? Um, orchestration, containers, might, might come up, might not, um, you know, and so forth. So, it's easy to boil the ocean, I would say, um, you know, with the number of potential paradigms or technologies you could learn. And that's why I suggest just understanding where in the data life cycle, again, ingest, store, process, and do something with the data, um, you know, which is analysis or machine learning. Figure out where in that life cycle, you know, you want to start and then dive in, understand the paradigms of that particular aspect of the life cycle understand the major technologies and when and um, you know when they're not appropriate and and go from there and then I think the most important thing is get hands-on with projects right so help out in your company if it's possible um, you know and uh, 
uh, dive in and you know engineer these new solutions. So, you know, so I don't think there's like a one uh, way of doing things. Uh, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, but um, hopefully this at least provides you with a starting point uh, if you're a data scientist or data analyst and you want to um, you know, explore data engineering as a, a possible um, you know, future career. So hopefully this is helpful for you. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more videos on this uh, as well as um, you know, start to release uh, you know, more course materials and tutorials. Uh, we find that this is, is a question that's been... Um, it's it's becoming too popular for us, and like I said, my inbox is exploding. So, hopefully, this at least gives you a start. I know it's um, a bit off the cuff, um, but um, yeah, stay tuned for more, and uh, have a great Monday. See you guys. Bye.